So when we say that the self is the seer, doer, and enjoyer, could you just uh, explain this a little bit? I mean, <clears throat> what we are trying to say, in a sense, is that if you look at the human being, and if you look at this self and the body and the coexistence between the two, and also when you look at this transaction between the self and the body, then we can see that. <clears throat> Effectively, it is the self who is deciding on this transaction between the self and the body. So the instruction that self is giving to the body is decided by the self. The sensation that self is reading from the body is also decided by the self. So both way, it is the self who is taking the decision. And in the process, the body is used as an instrument. So this whole process where decision is taken by the self for itself as well as for the body. <clears throat> if you look at that, it can be seen in terms of these three things. The self being the seer, the self being the doer, and the self being the enjoyer or experiencer. So if you think enjoyment means something positive only, then it is better word to use is experiences. So if the one who experiences. So if you look at this, you know, in detail, what it means is that <laughs> when we are seeing something, you know, who is seeing? Is it the body who is seeing, the eyes who is seeing, or it is the self? So if self. You see that, it is the self who is seeing things, who is understanding things. For example, so many things are there in front of your eyes. But you don't notice all of them. It is the self which decides what is important for it and tries to see that self. See, see that, you know, which is considered important. Similarly, this I'm showing something, you know, and you are listening to my voice. But there are many sounds coming from all around. But you don't pay attention to that. And therefore, you don't listen to them, you know, those sounds. Right. So it is this self who is deciding what to see. Right. And it is seeing that thing. And in the process, if necessary, it is also using the body as an instrument. So this example that you know, somebody puts a pen in, you know, gives me a pen. I see that form of the pen with my eyes. But this idea that it is a pen and which is supposed to write on the whiteboard, right, is something which I, you know, conclude. It is the self who is concluding this. So in that sense, self is this here. Right. Similarly, when the self is deciding to do something, you know, when a human being is deciding to do something, who is deciding? The self or the body? So I was taking this example again and again about this, you know, <coughs> self wanting to get the taste of the sweet, right? It likes. So it will instruct the body to walk to the sweet shop, you know, pay the money, pick up the sweet, put it in the mouth and all this. So all this, if you see, it is the self who is deciding, you know, for itself and for the body as to what to do. So it is taking the decision. 
and because self is the taking the decision therefore self is the doer and in the process it is body it is using the body as an instrument not always as and when required and similarly <coughs> you can see that it is the self who is experiencing right self who is experiencing the test of this sweet so if it was as per the expectation of the test you know of expectation of the self if the test was as per that it will feel you know comfortable or feel some happiness you know and if the test was a little different or quite different from what it was expected by the self then it will be unhappy so it is this self which is experiencing the body will give some information right to the self right now whether to make <coughs> uh, get happiness out of it or unhappiness out of it you know whether to feel depressed out of it or excited out of it that would depend upon the self so effectively you can see that it is the self who is seeing things understanding things it is the self who is deciding what to do what not to do and it is the self who is experiencing happiness or unhappiness so in that sense we said self is the seer self is the doer self is the enjoyer if you put them all together what we are saying it is the self who is taking the decision right the self is central to human existence the body is used as an instrument as and when considered important by the self thank you that makes it very clear yeah and and you know this is something which we are just uh, you know giving the details but what we have to start doing is to start observing you know we have to be aware of ourselves we have to be aware of the body then we have to be aware of this <laughs> transaction between the self and the body and if we are aware of it and we are observing it every moment then we can see all this happening then only we will really understand it otherwise these are just the details you know so if we take them just as information um we are not getting just take it them as information mm. then it is not of much use you have to keep remembering it so i would suggest is that take them as a proposal take them as a hint and start observing within your own self because you are the you know one of the human being mm-hmm. so <clears throat> this is being said is something which has to be observed every moment and in order to observe <clears throat> number one i have to be aware of myself then i have to be aware of the body then i have to be aware of this transaction which is taking place between me and the body okay. and if i see all this then what i have stated you know as details you can see it for yourself and when you see it for yourself that is when you understand really and then you can be authentic about it yes um we are saying that the self is deciding in every case and the body is just an instrument but uh, people take things for enhancing their mood people take drugs similarly medicines are used um, for depression so that uh, uh, the mood can be changed so here uh, the body and things in the body are actually having an effect on the self could you just uh, comment on this <clears throat> yeah what i would say is that body certainly has effect on the self right particularly when self is so much identified with the body so if you look at ourselves 
we have almost assumed ourselves to be body and we are so identified with the body that whatever happens to the body we think it is happening to us to the self so this is where we are that we are influenced by the status of the body because we think that we are the body so this is what is happening now what we are saying is that yes there is a coexistence between the self and body and therefore self has some impact on the body and the body might also have some effect on the self which is fine but what we said just now if you see that it is the self who is take you know the seer the doer the enjoyer then we can see that we are not you know decided by the body or the status of the body i can <clears throat> use the body as an instrument i can access the information from the body and i can give information to the body but by choice so this choice is there in the self to get influenced by the body or not get influenced by the body right so in that sense there is a sense of you know, being self organized at the level of self a sense of satantrata so you are not dictated by the body though you are responsible towards the body you are see, able to see the coexistence between you and your body and you think that you see that you are using it as an instrument and therefore you are responsible towards it but you are not dictated totally by the body mm. now as a result what is happening is that <clears throat> when we are influenced by the body and we do not have this you know clarity that i can interact with the body you know by choice and that body is an instrument to me and i'm using the body as an instrument therefore i have to be responsible towards it right so instead of being responsible we are reactive that is what is happening right mm-hmm. we are reactive so as we discussed in the you know last uh, uh, few question uh, you know when there is an extreme pain what happens when there is an extreme pain what happens do i respond to it or do i react to it so there are many people who will start crying right there are many people who will start crying and this crying is just a reaction to the sensation that i am getting from the body at that point of time right if i respond i will sense that there is some problem in the body and therefore there is pain and i will respond in terms of doing what i have to do to relieve the body from pain or from that problem so body has an effect or i get some sensation from the body some information from the body but if i am clear about myself and my body and the transaction then i will respond to it rather than react to it what we are doing is reacting rather than right <coughs> responding so now if you see if you give medicine to somebody who is suffering from depression and that is what we do you know for many of these people you know, who are suffering from depression or who are drug addicts you are giving some medicine to the body now what is happening is that it is giving some effect on the status of the body 
and because of that change status of the body the self has some effect right so it is reacting to that status of the body and because of that it feels relieved for the time being but what happens is it a permanent solution for the self is he able to come out of this depression <clears throat> the experience has been that he comes he feels relieved for a while right but then he is back to his condition of the self okay. and in the process many times his body also becomes unhealthy so one of the experiment that is being conducted by this bhutan institute of wellbeing under the guidance of dashok pematinle who is present in this session no is essentially this that if we are trying to treat this drug addicts or this people suffering from depression and all this <clears throat> if we treat them with physical medicine it is not going to be enough what we have to do is to treat the self no help the de- self develop itself right and if self is able to evolve itself develop itself then self can come out of this depression it can come out of this drug addiction you know once for all so one of the important thing that one of these people drug addicts was saying you know, when this was being uh, you know shared with him he was saying that now i can say that i am you know <clears throat> i am recovered recovered from addiction otherwise with this physical medicine you know at the most you can see that i am a recovering addict not a recovered addict so unless you treat the self and evolve the self you are not out of this depression or drug and all those things so i think it will be a good thing to you know uh, listen to dasho about his experience on this yeah um yes if dasho is there we can listen to him are you there hello yes good morning good morning this is a question that you have to respond say the question uh, again because i got it late huh no no can you, can you, yeah can you repeat the question yeah uh, the question was that you know um, uh, we are giving medicines for taking people out of depression so here the body is having an impact on the self and similarly for drug addiction also medicines are being used to take them out of addiction uh, so does it really work and um, uh, so you know the work that you have done in bhutan institute of well being uh, some findings if you could share about the effect of this on the self or you know um, working on the self directly rather than working with medication yeah how can they take out people you know from depression from drug addiction by helping the self to evolve to develop mm. yes i think uh, this drug addiction or any addiction of any kind uh, for that matter i think uh, it is i think as like ganesh is saying rightly um it is we find that it is right that we have to uh, treat the self the self has to understand itself and once they understand uh, then i think um, it's more likely that they uh, they would come out of this uh, addiction of course what happens is um, when the 
a true practice because this drug addiction has happened over a long time. Like let it be, uh, if it is just alcohol, they have got used to alcohol over a long, t- long period of time. And of course, their body has somehow become little adapted to uh, this uh, intake of alcohol. And that is there, the body has to be treated uh, to, the, to the level that it has to uh, sort of um, get out of that. But beyond this, it is the self. Uh, it has to be sorted out in the self, we find. And the results, like Ganeshji was quoting, um, um, many people say at the, at the end of the three months, and then we are watching um, that even the fact that they know that they have what we call natural acceptance within that, which is beyond their imagination, that can be used as a guide um, to keep them out of this. Uh, we had um, we had one uh, one person, and I was just talking to him. Just uh, what is it? Uh, one day ago, uh, and he is um, managing it. He is uh, he has been out of uh, the Bhutan Institute of Wellbeing almost a year now, and um, what he said at the end of uh, his three months treatment. Is yes, I now know that I have what we call the natural acceptance. I can see this within myself. I can use this as a guide to keep me out of this problem of addiction. And yes, he is, uh, he, after one year, he is clean. We are just watching and he is uh, saying he has no problem now. He's managing it, but it is yet to be seen. So while this experience and experiment is rather short uh, within even the Bhutan Institute of Wellbeing, it seems that this is the way uh, to uh, go about it. Um, So that's all I'd like to uh, share at the moment. Yeah. I was thinking that um, it, it makes a lot of sense. And if we think about even like for high blood pressure, we give medication, the same medication uh, at times it works well, but at other times in the same person, it doesn't work well. So uh, the, this could explain that, you know, the self, uh, when it is disturbed too much, then uh, even the chemicals don't work as well. Yeah, thank you. That would be our experience uh, from uh, from the addiction uh, um, that we had been working. Uh, yes, if the uh, the body has to be treated because the body has been damaged uh, over time, but at the same time, it is within the self. They have to accept that this is the problem. I think uh, I also uh, we we also like uh, another exp- um experience of one girl, a uh, class 12 um, girl who is completed class 12, who uh, had come twice to the treatment. And w- when we were talking about this natural acceptance, and we were talking what is naturally acceptable to you, she said, alcohol seemed to be very naturally acceptable to me. That is my natural acceptance because the thing, the time that I think about alcohol, it makes me happy. When I drink, I, it makes me happy. And then, of course, uh, when she said that, we had it, we got a little taken aback, and then we had to think it over. And then we got back one or two days after and said, when in the same discussion, okay, what happens with the alcohol? When if it is naturally acceptable to you, it should be mutually fulfilling. When you drink it, you should have continuous happiness. And when you drink it, other people should also be happy. And that got her thinking. 
and so I think uh, it is. They have to accept that yes, this is this is what is right because they have been thinking that all these induced habits is what is giving them happiness. So I think there are many indications that this is this is the way. I think uh, this is the way to go about it. We have to treat both the both the self and the body. If the body is damaged, the body has to be treated. But it is essentially the self. Once the self is determined, and then they know exactly what is wrong, then they don't have to even make a determined effect, uh, de determined effort. Uh, the fact that they know that itself make the habit drop over time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, there are people who are mentally challenged. So in this case, um, is the problem with the body or with the self? Uh, Ganeshi, we can't hear you. The mic is muted. Yeah. Uh, you know, we should define this challenged or being challenged first, or that is retardation first, and then we'll come to the mental retardation or mentally challenged people. See, the problem could be either at the level of body or at the level of self. Right? So if the problem is with the body, we'll say it is a physically challenged, you know, physically retarded. If the problem is with the self, then it is mentally challenged, mentally retarded. So there are both the possibilities and we should be able to separate them you know, and then therefore treat, treat them differently. Right. So this we have to find out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if I take some example, if you look at these people, older people, you know, with age, their capacity of the body gets retarded. Right? And it has impact on the old people. Right? They cannot lift things you know, and you know, walk, they cannot walk properly. Now, all these are because of the body. Body is getting you know, uh, retarded, and therefore this old person cannot work the way it, he was working before. <clears throat> but we have people right, who are mad people, you know, what we call them as mad. Okay. And if you look at them, many of them have a very good health. In fact, they have better health than the, you know, ordinary people. Mm. So they are mentally in trouble. But physically, you know, it is fine. Their body is quite healthy. So this is a problem with the self. This is the problem with the self. Now, if you try to treat these mad people, you know, with just the treatment to the body, it will not work. So the last example that we you know, were talking about, right? <clears throat> if you just treat the body, it will not work. You have to treat the body if there is a problem with the body. And you have to treat the self if there is problem with the self. And if there is problem with the self, the solution has to be sought in terms of evolution of the self. That is by way of self becoming aware of itself, self, you know, observing its own 
set of you know uh, kind of preconditionings and beliefs and and all that has to be done what we are talking about you know for the development of the self and if this self is able to work with itself and then from there it starts looking at the body and the transaction with the body and with other people outside then he can come out of the problem he can come out of the problem so this mental retarded people if you look at them this is the problem of the self and it has to be treated at the level of self if somebody is physically retarded then it has to be treated at the level of body Yeah. yeah. But so, this is interesting, you know. Uh, till now, most of the experiments have been conducted, presuming that human being is equal to body. So most of the treatments are given to the body. But we should try this, you know, like this experiment at BIW. We should try this experiment that if we treat both, okay, even these mad people or mentally retarded people, how does it work? So a systematic study has to be done. In fact, many of the things that we are saying, you know, is something which has to be taken as a proposal, which has to be taken as a conjecture, right? And experimented with, you know, at individual scale, at the level of our own family, you know, at the level of society, institutions. We should do that, and it will be a great, you know, favor for uh, people. in the world now you can see something like 30% of the people are suffering from this mental problem of uh, depression and frustration and drug addiction and all these things so drug addiction for example is certainly a mental problem so if we can develop this treatment which takes care of both the body and the self we are able to find out how much of help is required at the level of self how much of help is required at the level of body and we provide that help and you know if they come out of it it will be a great relief for them <clears throat> and with systematic study and all those research and everything we will be able to say with more authenticity and much more detail about this whole process of this self getting into problem the body getting into problem and how it we can come out of it mm So if there are people with the background of psychology and background of medical science and all this, they should join together and work on it. We have been discussing with uh, uh, this Vicky Roy from Delhi. They are into counselling. She and Rita said, and they are doing some work on this already. So, like that, we should. work on these issues in a very systematic manner and that will be of you know, help to these people as well as you know we will be able to see things much more clearly than what we are doing now so it will be good to take them as a proposal take them as a conjecture and work on you know, these details of it yes it's true what you're saying that we've been thinking that we are the body so we say feelings are in the heart so then uh, what happens when there is a operation like heart transplant that question comes that you know do the feelings also get transplanted or what happens <laughs> yeah i was just saying on the lighter side that you know it will be very interesting to check with person who got a heart transplanted <laughs> be able to tell whether you know his feelings have changed after the transplantation <laughs> and matches with the feeling of the person from whom he has got this heart <laughs> yeah what is your feeling about it yeah i i don't think that uh, feelings can get transplanted like this i think yeah. um 
you know this question of whether feeling leads to change in the body or the change in the body leads to feeling and i think that the feeling comes first and it is the feeling that leads to certain changes in the body and uh, so we can overcome the state of the body yes but that is when we are aware of ourselves uh-huh. and our interaction yes. yes we are not just you know kind of uh, unaware and letting this interaction decide our feeling mm mm-hmm. um regarding that uh, last uh, uh, what we talked about uh you mentioned that uh, producing physical facility is less than 1/3 one 1/4th one of the program so uh, why is this considered less than 1/4th could you explain that little bit yes we said that basic human aspiration is for continuity of happiness and in order to ensure continuity of happiness we have to understand the harmony and live in harmony at all levels of our being so that is our program program for ensuring continuity of happiness <clears throat> now when we go to this details of understanding the harmony and living in harmony at all levels of our being we could identify these four levels you know we are living at the level of individual as a member of the family as a member of the society as an unit in nature in existence so these four levels we identified and in order to ensure continuity of happiness we have to ensure understanding and living in harmony at each of these levels so there are four levels out of which there is one level of human being you know so we have to ensure this harmony at the level of individual harmony in human being which is one of the four you know levels of our existence so in that sense it is one fourth right okay now ensuring this harmony in human being is one fourth of the total program and now if you look at this ensuring harmony in human being it also has two parts one is ensuring harmony in the self at second is ensuring harmony with the body and harmony in the self is the major part right mm-hmm. so maintaining harmony with the body is even a part of that one fourth so we are saying less than one fourth okay okay Yeah. further you will see that to ensure the health of the body or harmony in the body we have to do many things you know to keep our body in good health for nurturing protection and diet utilization of the body and one part of it is physical facility one part of this ensuring the health of the body one part is ensuring the necessary physical facility for the body for its nurturing for its protection for its right utilization so it is even less than that you know now one fourth half of it is ensuring the health of the body and even for health of the body we have many things to do mm. you know we have to maintain our lifestyle okay which is not just the physical facility you know we have to you know do necessary you know kind of uh, uh things for maintaining the body in terms of exercises you know in terms of breathing you know exercises and all that mm. and then maintaining the time to sleep and get up and all that so out of that some part is ensuring the physical facility and while we are ensuring physical facility then these three things are there production of physical facility 
right? Protection of physical facility and right utilization of physical facility. So this is what we said. That's protection of you know protection, protection and right utilization of physical facility is just you know very small part, much less than one fourth of our total program for ensuring continuity of happiness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But unfortunately, what has happened is that we have we think that we are the body. Therefore, our basic need and all the need is basically the physical facility. And therefore, we are busy, you know, in getting physical facility. Right. And we think that this is the total program. In, in fact, if you look at this society today, what we call as modern society, you know, uh, you will see that most of our time and effort in education, in our you know, work is devoted to this physical facility. Yes. And even production, even in physical facility, there are three parts. One is production, the other is protection, and third is right utilization. Are we thinking of right utilization of physical facility? We are not doing that. Are we really taking care of the protection? You know, for example, you have a you know bought a new you know pair of clothes, and it has some you know it got teared somewhere. You know, do we repair or we just throw it? In fact, we throw it even if it is not torn somewhere. <laughs> So that protection we are not doing, right utilization we are not doing. And even we are not interested in production, we are interested in consumption, accumulation and consumption. So we are not doing even that less than one fourth. True. But we are all the time busy thinking of physical facility. Thinking of physical facility in terms of accumulation and in terms of consumption. And any amount of physical facility does not ensure continuity of happiness. Accumulation, accumulation of any amount and consumption of any amount of physical facility does not ensure continuity of happiness. And that is the problem of the whole civilization today. Um, coming to that, uh, you know, we've been saying, we've been talking about the self and the body. Uh, if you could just place, you know, when we say brain, where does it fit? When we say mind, where does that fit? And uh, what is the interrelationship? Yeah. So what we said that human being is coexistence of self and body. And self is a unit of consciousness. And body is an unit of material. Right. And this we identified in terms of their specific needs, activities, and responses. Right. This we have already done in last three lectures. Now we can see that what we call my as mind is a part of the self. And if you try to look at the details, this mind has to do with this imagination part. This imagination part, which includes the activity of desire, thought, and expectation. And this we will discuss you know, in the next lecture. We will try to explain, you know, detail it out. That this self has this activity of desire, thought, and expectation. And it is there we are deciding what to do outside, what to what not to do outside. So what is indicated by this word mind is essentially this. <laughs> this imagination, this desire, thought and expectation that is going on in the self. And which is deciding what to do outside and what not to do outside. 
in relationship. So this is mind, which is part of the self. And most of the time, your happiness and unhappiness lies at that level. So mind is feeling happy or unhappy, depending upon what is going on in it, in terms of its imagination, in terms of its feeling, thought. Now, when it comes to brain, this brain is part of the body. It is a physical thing and it is a part of the body. And the role of this brain is to coordinate the activities of different parts of the body. That is the role of the brain. So different, this information from different parts of the body is collected in the brain and it is available for the self to read. And similarly, when some instruction comes from the self, right, it is received by the brain and it is distributed to different parts of the body. So if you say walk, you know, this instruction of the self to walk you know, is received by the brain and it is distributed in different parts of the body. So when you are walking, many activities have to take place in different parts of the body. When you are speaking, all this calls for a lot of details about the activities which has to be performed in different parts of the body. So this receiving the information from the self and distributing it to different parts of the body. So this two work, you know, first receiving the information or collecting the information from different parts of the body and making it available to the self to read. And whatever is instructed by the self to receive that information and distribute it in different parts of the body. These are the two major functions of the brain. And these functions you can see is basically the function of coordinating. So this brain does the work of coordination of activities of different parts of the body. That is the brain and it is certainly a physical thing part of the physical body. But mind has to do with this feeling, thought, expectation, which is the part of the self. But this is all which we have to start looking into ourselves you know, and see. And what is important is that we should be able to see these functions taking place in the self, in the body and so on. It is not important to remember this you know, as given information. When we are able to see these things happening in ourselves, then it is really going to make sense and make a lot of difference in our whole way of working. Mm. Yeah, because in medical science, uh, you know, it is the brain that is controlling everything. So brain is given the importance of doing all the things, uh, what we are talking of as the self. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah, true. In fact, what else would you do if you don't uh, you know, even have a basic idea that the self is there, when you have not looked into yourself at all, and you are going by the assumption that everything is body, right? or you are the body, then what will you do? You will have to place everything in the body. Mm. Right? You have to place everything in the body and that is what we are doing you know, in the name of science or in the name of medical science. Mm. Right. Even thought, memory, all of these are said to be functions of the brain. Today, science. <clears throat> yes, so this is what we are saying. That now, I mean, as long as you go with the assumption that human being is equal to body, this is what we will have to do. But if we can see that human being is not just the body, but coexistence of the self and body, right? and if we can see that this brain and this mind, you know, 
is uh, the way we have just defined, you know, this mind being part of the self and the body being part of the body, you know, the brain being part of the body, right? Then we can understand and define the activities of the human being in a much better manner than what we are doing today. So this is very important thing to do, that if I can see that I am not just the body, but coexistence of self and the body, then, you know, I can see that this mind, this brain, you know, mind being part of the self and the brain being part of the body, then with this, all these things, we have to <coughs> relook at, you know, the human activity, the human purpose, the human activity, you know, and we will be able to understand it better. For example, this purpose of continuous happiness cannot be understood unless you understand the self. Body has no sense of continuity. Body has no sense of even happiness, joy. All this is the function of the self. So we don't even recognize the right purpose of the self, of the human being. Therefore, we have become very purposeless. Very purposeless. No, no direction. No direction to life. We go on accumulating money more and more, more physical facility without knowing what to do with it. So, what we are saying is that if we can see this, human being as coexistence of self and body, then we'll be able to understand the human being better, right? And we'll be able to better define the activities of the human being, right? But what I would say is that, as I was saying just in the last question, take these things as conjectures, take them as proposals and work on it, work on it. You know, we'll get a lot of, you know, kind of uh, clarity, a lot of wisdom. Uh, there is <clears throat> all this. By the end of this course, probably we'll be able to say all these things with much more affirmation. Because by then, number one, we would have, you know, looked into many things in detail. And number two, you must have also have conducted, you know, this experiment within yourself then we can be more affirmative, we can be more authentic. But I would say that till then, take it as a proposal, take it as a conjecture and work on it. Your experience will be very revealing for you and also for others. Yes. Yes. This question also comes up that how do I make out that the activity is actually taking place in the self and not the brain? Like, uh, because this, uh, uh, in science, it has been said again and again that everything is the brain. So how do I actually make it out? There is even talk of left brain has these functions, right brain has these functions. So um, how is there a practical way I can make out? I mean, I can just give a hint, you know, that one possible way could be that we look at the activity of, you know, activity of these things. Right. If that activity has the possibility of continuity, right, then it is the activity of the self. If there's continuity is there, or it has the possibility of continuity, then it is activity of the self. On the other hand, if continuity cannot be maintained, it is the activity of the body, which includes the brain also. So the activity of the brain also will not have the continuity. So one of the examples is that when you are thinking, this thinking can go on continuously, 
there is no problem therefore it is the activity of the self on the other hand if i instruct the body through brain to keep working according to my thinking continuously it cannot it will get tired after some time so it is the activity of the body you know which is not continuous in nature and therefore i let to give rest to the body give rest to the brain in fact many people who feel that when they think too much they have headache mm. you know this is interesting thing if you look at this you know what you are doing essentially is when you are thinking and you are not decided right even then you keep passing this instruction to this brain to the body and that is how your brain and your body is getting agitated so the solution to this is that you decide for yourself that unless i am this, you know i have taken the decision there is no point sending information to the body sending instruction to the body when i am decided i will give the instruction necessary instruction to the body if you do that you can see that you may keep thinking over a long period of time even when you are not decided you know it is fine and you will not put any load on the brain on the body because unless you have resolved yourself at the level of your imagination why give instruction to the body why involve the brain the body but we have become so unaware that and we have become so you know attached to the body and identified with the body that we keep passing this information mm. in fact very interesting you know in many of these experiments you know uh, of uh, focusing attention if you are asked to keep your eyes closed right and see the sensation of your body right you can read the sensation from any part of the body without looking at the sensation physically the bo- the eyes are anyway closed so you don't have to make use of the eyes but you can sense you know sense this sensation <clears throat> but it is found that most of this people who start practicing on it they keep you know moving their eyes mm-hmm. so if they have to see the sensation the you know so okay then they bring their eyes down if they have to see the sensation in the brain the head then take their eyes up and because of that they feel tired you know at the level of eyes which is not being used anyway right because you are not seeing through the eyes <laughs> but so much of identification so much of you know practice we are already into true yeah so what we are saying is in a sense is that if this activity is something which i can go on you know with it is likely to be the activity of the self if it is an activity which cannot you know i cannot go on i have to give rest to the body then it is the activity of the body or the brain mm mm-hmm. so these are certain things you know which we can take it as a base and work on it these you know, things and it will be quite useful useful for ourselves and useful for others and useful for science also <laughs> so we have to talk about science of material but we have to also talk about science of consciousness then probably we will be doing justice to science 
and we'll be able to do justice to human being also yeah yes um uh... so we are only talking about science of material today we have to talk about science of material certainly but then we have to talk about science of consciousness and then we have to talk about the science of coexistence of material and the consciousness which is quite expressive in case of human being yes yeah so sometimes in accidents people lose their memory and then um, something happens and the memory comes back this is often shown in movies and all so how does that happen see number one is that if you look at the memory if you look at your remembrances it is part of the self this is one thing which we should start observing and important thing there is that when i see something or when i experience something i decide to remember those things which i consider important okay. so for example if you visit a place you see so many things but after one year if you are asked you know what are the things that you saw you would remember a few things not all the things so this updating is done by the self so it takes note of the things and then depending on what it considers to be important it remembers so this remembrance this memory is part of the self right so this is one thing second thing is that when you have to recall these memories then one thing is that you can recall it directly at the level of self but in some cases you may need some input from outside or from the body if this is the case then there is a role of the body or the brain in recalling the memory mm -hmm. this is important you know so somebody says did you see this you know boy and then he says you know he call some name now this input from outside helps the self to recall this particular boy you know which it has seen before now there this brain or the body is going to play a role and if there is some problem in the body or in the brain it may be difficult to recall this information mm -hmm. okay. similarly when you are trying to reconstruct some you know image of a house for example of a building of a palace okay. then two things are happening one is you are looking at your you know past remembrance and also you are you know trying to get some input you know in terms of drawing this image you know on the paper or on the board or somewhere now that kind of process which where we are involving this body or the brain i may need you know some involvement of the body of the brain and if the brain or the body is not functioning properly then i am not able to recall it so on the basis of this what i want to say you know can we go to the next slide rajuli yeah so now if you see in case of accident it may be that self does not want to recall that information because it is painful and this is very interesting that you don't want to recall so you are not recalling right so till it comes to the term with it 
it does not want to recall them so you have to give time so it takes time like when you meet an accident you feel so fearful about it you know many times you even withdraw your you know kind of uh, exchange transaction with the body so you don't even remember many things but even those things which you remember right you don't want to recall them because it is very painful for you but when you give time the self is able to you know kind of be in term with it and it is able to recall how it happened right mm. on the other end maybe that he require you know self requires some input from outside or from the body in that case self will require the involvement of the brain and now if there is some temporary problem with brain then self will have to wait till the brain gets recovered so when brain gets recovered self will be able to recall that particular information mm. right so what is being said is that both self and the body may be involved in certain set of memory in you know, a certain cases of memories or remembrance so we have to take care of both include both of them in the process rather than just thinking that the body is and the brain is all that matters mm. so this also would be a very interesting thing you know to work on so what i am suggesting is that it is good to take this response which i am giving as a conjecture and work on its detail then it will give us final description of this process so what is the range where the self is working and what is the range where body or the brain is working and if we have to treat such cases right how do we go about it how do we go about it i um have a you know um as a child when i was in school i fell from a bus now i uh, even till today if i think about it and from that time also uh, you know the memory of being in the bus is there the memory of being on the ground after falling is there but that memory of what happened in between that is not there so would you say something that this is something like this or hmm. yeah it could be this or what i explained or it could even be that you know when you were falling and it was very painful the self withdrew from the body hmm. so there was no interaction with the body therefore whatever happened is not there in, you know we have you have not even access the information so it is not there at all in the memory so there are two possibilities that it is there in the memory but you don't want to recall second is that you have not even taken note of it because you have withdrawn from the body because you thought that it is going to be very painful mm -hmm. and when the body fell down and it was all okay you know you thought that okay it is fine you know now i can associate with the body in the meantime you forgot all this because you did not access even information so this happens with many people you know they would not just have any clue of it because they did not even take note of it they thought that it is going to be painful so they withdrew their association with the body for the time being so all this phenomena keeps happening you know. but now with, when we look at with you know as coexistence of self and bo body human being then probably we will be able to study this phenomena much better but this is what i am saying we have to take all this as conjectures and work on it mm. could you also uh, explain little bit about coma when we say you know somebody is in a coma what does that mean and when we say somebody is dead i can i can only guess you know i can go only guess and say that this coma seems to be a state 
when the self is not able to transact the information with the body right and that i would add for all practical purposes because it is not that there is no transaction some transaction is taking place but for all practical purpose we are not able to transact the information with the body but self is maintaining this coexistence with the body mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so in that case you know you have to help help to keep the body you know with its minimal functioning you know with this help from outside because now the self cannot regulate the body because it is not able to transact information with the body but it is maintaining its coexistence its acceptance for the body and it is doing some very you know small you know kind of transaction or is able to do any very small transaction this i am saying because people who have come out of coma for after you know, 20 years 30 years their experience has been that they did take note of you know the fact that some people came around and they were talking and you know all this so that minimal or less than minimal you know transaction is taking place but this is not sufficient to take care of the body so it is not able to regulate the body but it is aware of the body but that is not able to maintain even the minimal functioning of the body so this has to be maintained from outside you know so those people who are in coma and you know are kept in the hospital they their this minimum functioning of of the body are taken care of by the doctors by the nurses and the staffs and because that association is still there it has the chance to recover so mm -hmm. the self is you know waiting for the body to recover to the extent that it can regulate the body you know. so if that happens it can regulate the body so when we say there have been many many uh, kind of experiment i mean kind of uh, experiments conducted in the past you know in many of these traditions which had this clarity about the self and body and their coexistence so but we can do those experiments ourselves mm. yes yeah yes please. so and when we uh, today you know when we say somebody is uh, dead or brain dead you know we see that there is there are no um sort of brain waves uh, no activity in the brain then we say th that the person is brain dead so what happens to the self over there see you are saying brain dead and you are saying that he is not dead you know <laughs> that, that, yeah that only means that the self is still associating <laughs> but uh, the functioning of the brain for all practical purpose you know is not there so the self is not able to regulate right mm. the body but it has not dissociated from the body completely if it dissociates from the body completely then he is dead <laughs> otherwise you know the brain is not functioning for all practical purpose so he is a brain dead but that is not uh, this thing so in fact this is what i was saying many of the experiments conducted in the uh, tradition one of them is that if somebody is you know getting into deep you know state of uh, meditation you know or state of samadhi you know then uh, you when you are observing the activity of the body you might find that you know it is you know is brain dead right but it is not dead you know it is not you know kind of transacting with the body because it is working with the self you know to that deep extent that it is not you know 
working with the self or working even with the you know space so it is suggested that you don't disturb mm -hmm. the body so if you are not sure whether he is alive or dead at least don't disturb mm -hmm. so you are experiments in fact many of these people have conducted this experiment with the modern you know no uh, kind of medical science that you know in that state of uh, this thing you know um, samadhi when you check with your this thing you find that he is you know brain dead but then it comes back you know and is able to regulate the body mm. i don't remember exactly the names i think probably one of them was this Swami Ram, who himself was a doctor, an MBBS doctor, and did conduct some of these experiments, but there are many such cases. But important thing is that you know we can you know think of these things you know and working in detail about what exactly is happening. You know. Mm. Yes. But we have to observe ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let us observe ourselves. Yeah, that way science can't explain so many. Um, there are so many instances of people, I think, in samadhi who don't eat and all, don't do any activities for months together, don't drink water, nothing. So they are not able to explain that because metabolism yeah. drops. And 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 we should not take this as a you know kind of uh, chamatkar. Yeah. So that has been unfortunate, you know. we have to take them as specific experiments you know mm -hmm. as case studies you know, and mm -hmm. study them try to understand them yeah we have to try to uh, look at these things ourselves yes yes <laughs> so yes. doctor and till uh, then till then take it as a case study do not believe it yes don't disbelieve it also don't believe it also <laughs> yeah when i'm saying believe it means you are taking it without understanding it yes. without experiencing it yes yes so dr pramod kumar goel he had a question he put it in the chat so we'll go to pramod ji and then after that amita kapoor she has a question amita kapoor ji yes. so first for goel ji then amita kapoor ji yeah, ha good morning to all uh, uh, yes. before putting my question i just want to uh, comment on this uh, like uh, just now we were talking about the brain dead and uh, uh, the persons who go to samadhi uh, uh, brain in in brain dead person even we uh, do the organ transplantation also the person who are declared brain dead from whom the organs if uh, the persons are put on the ventilator their organs can be transplanted to the another person uh, because yeah. their circulation is going on so this one point i wanted to say uh, second uh, regarding uh, uh, like a, a person who go to samadhi uh, their body functions go at such a low pitch that they seems to be dead but actually they are not dead even even sometime after electrical current if the person get electrical shock and he goes to in that state but he can be revived Uh, from that, this is just like medical science, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, so now my question was directly, uh, uh, like if uh, we are uh, uh, we are we have right understanding that I have enough uh, physical facilities uh, to take care of my body to for protection of my body for nourishment and. for right utilization not for myself even for my family also if i have this right understanding so why my question was like if we are working in a like private institute we are working and uh, when we work with more sincerity we get more work actually we get more responsibilities and yeah. should we ask for our uh, enhancement in our salary from the institute because we are getting more and more we are getting more uh, responsibility more work uh, with the seniority but because we have understanding that we have enough so should we ask or should we continue working with the old salary my question <laughs> yes 
like <laughs> the important thing is that you know we have to have more more than what is required so that feeling of prosperity right yes if sir. we have this feeling of prosperity with whatever we are getting then what is important is the next thing you know and that is feeling of respect right feeling of acceptance right so when you are working more then you are it's not that you are not getting anything in return you are getting that acceptance you are getting that respect you know from people around you people with whom you are working in fact if you are just you know hang kind of uh, keep uh, uh, you know asking about money and such physical returns people don't place you a very high anyway right so i what i would say that this is uh, you know important to see that yes we need physical facility to ensure this sense of prosperity this feeling of prosperity but there is more to it we seek respect we seek name fame we seek acceptance right Certainly. and ultimately we seek this understanding you know understanding this feeling in our own self so we should start working for that we said definitely uh, we get, we are getting more respect more acceptance that the uh, things is there and even management also says see uh, your designation has improved now your respect has improved you yourself are noting so don't ask for salary it's that and uh, anyway your salary is enough to support your uh, family and your protection so we should remain satisfied with that so i take it like that way yeah remain satisfied with that but you can work for this higher things you know work for your right understanding work for your right feeling that will be at my own level na that i will be working at my own level work with your at your own level and at the level of the institution at the level of the institution also that is what we have been saying right from the beginning the main thing is that this thing should come in the mainstream education there it will be available for everybody in the society every child who is going through education so that sometimes work and i consider that today you know the kind of civilizational change we need can be effectively initiated through this education process so if we can bring these things in mainstream education we will do a good service to the whole civilization so you have to start working for higher things and when you do that you will make other people sensitive to it Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I and let me tell you another thing. You know. Yes. In terms of physical facility, we are already getting much more than what we are really working for. This farmers' movement going on, right? You are yes, from sir. Punjab. Yes, sir. This farmer movement going on is essentially a movement against this in unequal terms of exchange. right we are not even willing to give the minimum wage for the farmer and the farmer family when we are calculating the cost of the you know farm produce not I even 200 rupees per day and for the professor we are willing to give 5000 rupees per day so 25 times so so then that means then we should ne uh, sir uh, 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 i means to to say i uh, i okay with the that farmer uh, i am with the farmer movement uh, but uh, my point is that uh, uh, if we have studied so much we have done so much uh, uh, study and now we are in so much higher post so should we continue with that lower salary then why we are telling our children also that please study please study so that you will yes you can ask this question see this is very interesting you know while you are studying also you are getting more visibility than this farmer's son 
right? Pharmacists then, they are working yes. in the field and we are sitting in a conditioned room and studying, you know, and eating three meals a day, not even washing our clothes. Now, what, what mehnat are we doing as compared to these farmers' children? So then we should stop studying, sir, no? why we are doing so many yeah, degrees? Good things, better things than what we are studying. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. I'm not saying that you do it immediately, but just you know, all these inequalities have been maintained in the society, and it is creating problem. I mean, there are some problems with the Kisan movement also, but I'm not you know saying that they are all justified. But it is a genuine issue that do we have equal terms of exchange? Mm. Right. If no, then something has to be done. Otherwise, the society will get destabilized. Mm. Yeah, ultimately, we have to find a way for an equitable and just society. Yes. Something mm. which is well-being of all. <laughs> this so, is the uh, target set by the new education policy. Yeah. Mm. And we should work for it. So yes. certainly uh, we'll ask these questions about the salary, my salary, but we'll also ask the questions about, you know, the whole society. Yes, <clears throat> yes sir. Hello. So like I have seen mostly like uh, even retired person, uh, like uh, I have seen when they meet, mostly they talk about like uh, your pension has come, uh, whether you got the arrear from your pension this <laughs> month, this month, but their talk was like they are talking for one hour, 40 minutes, they will be talking about the, uh, this thing, like uh, where they are, have done investment, like this thing. Uh, no, this is my personal, I have seen. Even among the doctors uh, uh, who are working in government job, especially I have seen uh, like in yes. government job. True. True. Okay. They are not talking about relationship. They are not talking about their own growth of the self. They are not talking about the understanding. I mean, now that they have assured income through pension, they can talk of much higher things. Mm -hmm. And they are getting this pension without any work. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, given all this, they should it should be taken as an opportunity to go further, not get stuck there. That is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yes, sir. In fact, I have been telling this, you know, uh, in this morning session. We had a lot of discussion with Tripathi ji. Sri Tripathi ji is of 81 years of age or 82 years. Uh, that we should, you know, do something with this, you know, uh, old, I mean, kind of senior citizens who already have a lot of facilities, you know, they have a lot of experience also, a lot of, you know, kind of uh, knowledge. They should start, you know, thinking in terms of what best they can do for their family and for the society as a whole. Mm, yes, sir. Yeah. It will be a very constructive thing to do. And uh, the party has been trying, but his uh, uh, kind of experience is that most of the time this issue ends up in this only, you know, the salary, the pension, the areas, the, and injustice being done to them. They don't take interest in higher things, but we can start doing it. Mm. There yes. will always be ten percent people who will join you if you start working on such things. Yes. Parasaji. Uh, namaskar, uh, Ganesh ji. Uh, namaste. Namaste. Uh, I am uh, uh, tempted or encouraged to ask. Uh, a question in this wonderful assembly where uh, we have uh, you uh, always our guide. We refer you so much. We have Dashoji and Dr. Shamila. Uh, and, you know this discussion on uh, drug addiction. You made a you made a uh, you you stated uh, uh, an important you made a wonderful uh, statement that uh, you made a statement. I would say that. Uh, uh, by 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 giving medicine to a drug addict, we are probably only uh, it is a 
state of recovering addiction not recovered we have a reco- we have a recovering addict and not uh, as a recovered addict so of course part of the probably answers have already been given but i would uh, i as i said i am tempted to ask once again to all to all three of you this question that means the medicine really does not help to totally recover a, a drug addict it has to be uh, the association of self as well so this is my question to three of you once again yeah i think recover recovering addict and recovered addict yeah that's the answer to hello Hello. Yes, I'm saying Sharmila ji and Dasho will answer. Yeah, I think uh, Dasho, uh, you may be able to relate some experiences about this from BIW. Yeah, Dasho, you may be able to relate some experiences about this from BIW. Yeah, Dasho, you may be able to relate some experiences about this from BIW. Yeah, Dasho, you may be able to relate some experiences about this from BIW. Yeah, Dasho, you may be able to relate some experiences about this from BIW. uh, uh ganesh ji made uh, the statement today while uh, giving us a narrative uh, wonderful narrative so once again i thought it's a wonderful assembly of uh, the three of you this morning i mean we have it every day but uh, this this topic is being discussed so i thought i am tempted to ask this question i'm just also thinking um i suppose uh when a person has to consider out of addiction i am recovered meaning i am not likely to go back into my previous state of addiction so it has to happen in the self um and the self has to be um quite clear about why he got into the addiction problem in the first place and now that he understands himself he is not likely to get back into that state again but i think um, as i was saying earlier uh, this is this is the kind of indication that we are getting from the last 3 or 4 years that i've been associated with um, watching these people talking to these people and working with these people um when a person is really recovered in the sense that he does not go back into this addiction problem is something that needs to be documented over a long period of time so i think what what happens is definitely uh, personally i am quite uh, clear in my mind that medical treatment um without any um treatment in the self clarify clarification in the self will not help they'll always remain a recovering addict meaning the drugs the other uh, sort of um drugs on the treatment in body uh, treatment to the body that they may give can just last last just for so long and i suppose that medication probably would be required over and over again as we understand the self and the body separately and uh, something if you say that this is not going to be my habit anymore has to be really determined in the self and mm-hmm. that can only come through uh, the understanding of the body and the mind and how it functions and seeing the real problem uh this is all that i could uh, probably say on this yeah thank you thank you dasho i think uh, uh, what i would just like to also add is that uh, not only drugs i think uh, for a lot of situations uh, uh, you know conditions of the body uh, i mean conditions of the human being i should say we look at it only in terms of the body so uh if we look at you know attention deficit in children 
it is being treated with medication at the level of the body and it is found that without counseling it doesn't work as well similarly um, i can relate one uh, when i was doing my post graduation um, Uh, there was a study conducted uh, in children uh, with cancer and uh, there was a, a sort of a group of uh, uh, social workers who used to work with the children to um, help with this uh, they did the study with two groups of children in one group uh, they were only given the chemotherapy in the other group the chemotherapy was given along with this uh, support of the social workers uh, you know sort of uh, counseling them that counseling included picturizing uh, visualizing um, the medicine that was being given eating up the cancer cells and the body becoming better and all that was happening and uh, so besides this difference the Uh, there was no other difference and the two groups were identical and it was found that the children with the counseling did much better in terms of recovery so like that there are many many studies i think uh, which are not highlighted but which show that uh, you know if we just work at the level of the body uh, it is not something that can be uh, continued for too long without involving the self so that's just what i wanted to add also yes yeah 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 i think uh, thank you uh, dashu ji thank you dr shamila uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, ganesh ji can add something it but uh, i think uh, ganesh ji is uh, you know emphasis that uh, 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 the study in in the then the present medical science which which probably focuses only on the body there is a need for the self also uh, the the study of self also to be associated which probably we are not doing at the moment and hence the need that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the science of consciousness also should be uh, uh, a part of our study with the science of uh, medicine the science of material so i think uh, this is the in my opinion as we been have been associating that is a serious uh, drawback which needs to be filled uh, especially in the science of medicine where probably only the body is being focused and not the self am i right ganesh ji yes <laughs> yes to in fact three places we have to you know incorporate this study of consciousness you know science of consciousness one is the education when we bring in this self you know and the development of the self then there will be very significant shift you know in the way we look at education and in the way we give the education second is the area of health you know lot of changes will take place and we'll be able to do more justice you know to this health work you know and third is this justice ensuring justice in family in society so these are three areas where you know there is there is going, going to be a very significant shift in the very way of perceiving things and doing things one is education second is health third is justice so if we can bring in this self the consciousness the science of consciousness along with the science of material then it will make a lot of difference yes thank you parashar ji thank you thank you so much uh, all three of you sir thank you very much kare ji dashu ji dr shamila uh, dr sivdasan namaskar ji namaskar sir namaskar today namaskar. i had a lot of input clarity into self and uh, body especially with input from dashu the the bi w bhutan institute of welfare and of well being and of no my i need some more clarity uh, maybe from sharmila madam or i mean being a doctor professional doctor i mean medical professional see body we i understand self is the commander in chief 
I mean, it can generate information, means instruction, and you know, send it to the brain or uh, send it to brain or body. And is body able to generate inst information or instruction? That is one question. And being that case, being that the case, brain is brain uh, receive or intercept information both from self and body. This is the second point. I see clarification from, I mean, the panelist. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I can respond and then Ganesh ji can add uh, whatever my understanding is, is that um, the, the sensations that are there in the body, um, they go via the nerves um, to the brain and from the brain they are accessed by the self. Um, and a lot of sensations are there, but self decides, you know, what it wants to take, what it doesn't want to take. Like Ganesh ji gave the example of, you know, when he's talking, we are listening to him. But then there are so many other sounds that we don't pay attention to. Those sounds are reaching our ears, but uh, we are not interested in them, so we don't pay attention to them. Um, so far as um, deciding what to do, the decision also happens in the self. And then after the self decides, it sends some instruction to the body. And this um, sending the instruction to the body, it does through the brain, because then the brain again sends this information back to the various parts of the body wherever it is required. So that, uh, like Ganesh ji mentioned, the, the brain does the part of distributing it to the body and collecting it from the body. And ultimately, it is the self that is deciding, um, you know, what to read, what not to read, what to, you know, the decision making, and then um, how to um, sort of go about it. So like, uh, what to do about it. So. I don't know if that clarifies your question, and maybe Ganesh ji can add something to this. I, I think it is fine. You know, the, uh, we have already responded to it. <coughs> I mean, what I can just add is that so the brain is getting information from two places. One is from different parts of the body, and the other is from the cells. Yes, this is one. Second is that <coughs> uh, this this sensation is being generated in the body, not by the self, right? So because of the condition of the body itself, or because of some input from outside, so let's say you know, cold outside. So there is some effect on the body, and therefore some sensation is generated. So it is true that sensation can be generated at the level of body you know, without the involvement of the self. But when it comes to reading that sensation by the self, there the decision is that of the self. So brain has this input from different parts of the body and it has some input from the self also. Yes. One example I was thinking of was, you know, when um, uh, people are not able to hear properly and uh, are given hearing aids, a lot of people find it very uncomfortable and don't use it. Uh, yeah. And one of the main reasons for that is because that hearing aid magnifies all the sounds. So mm -hmm. everything, you know, that uh, the, like if I'm sitting in now, if the tree, uh, if a bird is chirping on a tree, then that sound also will be magnified. If the fan is uh, going on, that sound will also get magnified. So all sounds are magnified. But what the self does that we are not able to uh, mimic. What the self does it is uh, it identifies only what it 
thinks is important and picks up those sounds and uh, doesn't pay attention to the other sounds but with the hearing aid it's magnifying everything to such a large extent that it becomes very difficult so a lot of old people they even though they are prescribed hearing aids they put them aside because they don't find them comfortable to use yes, wonderful, wonderful. this is a very uh, convincing thing you know i think in engineering terms no uh, uh, we have you know something called now closed loop control system automatic system and all then we have controllers at different levels because majority of us are all engineers we can understand a uh, cutting across the branches we know automation and you know control system close control system wherein we have controllers at different levels and we have actuators at different level so i think uh, these concept can also be embedded into into this uh, what you call functioning of cell body brain sensors and all the thing is what i uh, personally feel yes in fact <clears throat> we have to bring in this consciousness and then study all this you know control systems then probably will be you know able to understand better ai me for business leaders and for business managers thank you sir thank you very much yes we have aparajita uh, from western region uh, namaste sir नमस्ते सर सर आपके बात अभी जो आज आज का डिस्कशन हुआ उसने मुझे समझ में आया कि हम लोग जब भी कुछ फीलिंग्स होती हैं हर टाइम कहीं ना कहीं बॉडी पे वी आर वी आर वांटिंग टू एसोसिएट इट इन द बॉडी इफ द थिंकिंग इज हैपनिंग इन द ब्रेन और वी आर फीलिंग फ्रॉम द हार्ट आई वाज जस्ट वांटिंग टू नो दैट व्हाट वी कॉल एज माइंड इन इंग्लिश एंड व्हाट वी कॉल एज मन इन हिंदी is it one and the same thing because whenever i associate mind i am associating it with the brain or you know i am putting a forehead i am placing my hand and think i the mind i am not clear in the mind and whenever i say it's man ki man hai to man hum zyada tar hriday se associate karte hain so is it the same word or is it there is some other word for man in english so <coughs> Yeah. these words you know uh, uh they carry the whole history you know uh, and the culture so we have to take them with that openness you know so man for example is one thing which is used very widely in uh, sanskrit and also in hindi and most of the indian languages so uh, and it has different connotations the smallest sense in which man is used is this selecting and testing you know making the selection of what to eat for example and taking the test of that you know you eat you eat so this is the lowest you know kind of uh, uh, meaning given to it so just selecting something to eat and then testing that thing that you are eating this is also called man then it is also many places called as manas manas is basically you know this mind you know what we have explained as mind you know that is it includes this desire the feeling the thoughts the expectations so the first meaning only includes expectation second meaning includes all this desire thought and expectation where the decisions are taking place and it is also used you know in many places as this consciousness as a whole so in that case we are using the word self so bun is used for activity of expectation selecting and testing man is used for this whole imagination that is feeling thought and expectation and man is many times used as self which includes all these activities and more than that
so when we are saying mind you know it is equivalent to that man which we are saying as manas you know as something which <laughs> has this whole kalpana silta you know this ichha vicharasa all this put together is that man is translated as mind in english but what we should focus is that you know that reality that we are talking about so i am talking about this reality of activities of desire thought and expectation taking place in the self that i am calling as mind now when you have to call it by some other word in hindi you should have this clarity about the reality and then you can choose an appropriate word which has its own history history ji sir thank you sir sir so mind is also a kind of not we can call, cannot call it an organ but it is also a sensory uh, abstract uh, thing that gives input to the self right sir mind is not uh, i mean uh, we are calling that as brain not as mind when it comes to mind it is not giving sensory input anymore but it will give some input in terms of the feeling in terms of the thought which is not sensory in nature all <laughs> right sir so that difference between the activity of the consciousness and activity of the material we have to keep in mind sensing is this you know has to do with this material world you know the sensations the feeling has to do with the world of consciousness thinking has to do with the world of consciousness but but what i would suggest is that you know we have to start working with ourselves looking into ourselves then slowly we will be able to see all these you know, things see their meaning in terms of the reality that is being talked about from kolkata in uh, the my question is that in our society old persons sometimes old persons feeling uh, are suffering from different types of uncertainty uncertainty the uncertainty of having good health uncertainty financial uncertainty or to some extent insecurity they are feeling of insecurity 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 for health insecurity for relationship also and financial insecurity is also there so with age they are suffering from this type of problem the how can we this they can come out of these problems yes you want me to give a short term suggestion or long term suggestion long term suggestion long term okay. suggestion sir yes. so the long term suggestion is that a family has to have three generations at least yeah so if there are three generations then these old people are taken care of the young children are also taken care of and adults are anyway you know taking care of all this no i don't think this is true for all though they are we are caring them to our level best but they are still having some insecurity no i'm coming to that i'm coming to that yeah no yeah. so in terms of the uh, society in terms of the family the security is in terms of having these three generations together and if these three generations are there together then this you know old people can be very you know to organize their family and also for the children you know particularly this young children they need lot of attention you know both in terms of guiding you know uh, them you know, 
and in terms of helping them to practice you know, and even appreciating them. So these old people in the house, they are performing very significant you know, role, you know, significant role in terms of transferring the tradition from one generation to the other generation and taking care of this young you know children which we have not you know which we are now kind of you know uh, missing increasingly so when the, the group, old people are not having this support and this assurance from the family so there are many problems you know they feel financially insecure they feel you know insecure in terms of their health they have nothing meaningful to do. They don't have children to love and take care of them, you know. So all these problems have accumulated. So this is one thing that we have to handle. The second thing which we have to handle is that when you grow old, you see that the body is you know, almost, you know, getting degenerated, okay. And it is bound to get degenerated finally, you know. So that you see, and that is another worry that there may be a time when you either your body is not in good health or it is died. So that concern becomes very significant for you. Right? Unless you have the understanding of the difference between the self and the body. <laughs> and unless you are able to see that self is continuous and it remains continuous, where the body keeps changing anyway. You know, this death and birth is a significant kind of jump okay, in the process. But this birth and death is taking place anyway. So unless I see this difference between the self and the body, and I do not mind, I mean, unless I identify myself as self, you know, <laughs> associating with the body by choice, I will have the worry. I will have the fear, fear of losing this body. And if this body is the only source of happiness for me through sensation or through you know, exchange of feeling from others, then I will be really worried. You know, a lot of insecurity will be there. And there is no way to come out of this security by having more money and more you know, uh, kind of people around. The solution is possible when I understand this and I am authentic about you know, myself then I don't have to, you know, keep worrying. There is no fear. Yes, this is what I would say, brief. Oh, that is true. Thank you, sir.